With Earth as our fixed frame of reference, describing the motion of a glider becomes really easy. We can move forward or backward. But note that we can't move forward and backward at the same time. Well, linear motion, or motion in a straight line, can also be described as one-dimensional motion. One-dimensional motion means that you can move in one direction at one time. Two-dimensional motion means that you can move in two directions at one time. More on that later, though. In physics, we use the symbols positive and negative to communicate direction. In mathematics, those same symbols are used to communicate functions, addition and subtraction. But in physics, we use positive and negative to exclusively communicate direction. Well, now that we have the ability to put signs to our directions, we can now describe forward as positive and backward as negative. Well, there are lots of ways that we can use the symbols positive and negative in describing motion. Well, let's go see some other places where we can apply positive and negative to communicate direction. All right, if we declare the surface of the Earth to be our frame of reference, and we just stand here and look around, we are going to see a ton of things in motion. I'm moving this way. I'm moving that way. Something's coming at me. Ah! All of these ways of communicating motion call our attention to the need to communicate direction. Well, in our introduction, we've identified the symbols for direction as positive and negative. Now, those two symbols have two applications. Those two applications, those two applications are physics and mathematics. Now, from a math point of view, the symbols positive and negative call your attention to either adding or subtracting two values. In essence, these symbols communicate functions. They tell you what to do with the numbers. Now in physics, positive and negative have a different purpose. We are going to be using them to communicate things like up and down, right and left forward and backward. And you know what? Those are just a few of the ways that we are going to use these symbols. But all told, everything that we have here communicates direction. And direction is absolutely huge when it comes to physics. Because the first block of physics that we're going to study is the study of motion. And we're going to use these symbols to communicate direction of that motion. Now, with these directions and our coordinate system, we have a really good idea about how to consider motion right off the bat. As an example, back to our army guy on cart. If we put army guy on the cart with his coordinate axis, so they're both on the cart, i.e. The, the frame of reference is the cart and we move it in this direction, there is no relative motion relative to the origin of army guy. So he can say he's not in motion. But if we were to take the coordinate system and put it on Earth, we can now say that army guy is moving in the positive direction or moving forward. And if he goes this way, army guy is now moving backward. And if I knock him down, ah, army guy falls down. So with our coordinate axis, we can define something being in motion and we can more specifically define the direction of that motion. All right, our last piece. 
Let's define scalars and vectors.